pretty much. Sounds good. Thank you very much. Hello, everybody. Like, like you said, I'm I'm Benedictator, and we'll get some Bioshock speedrunning going here. Hey, everything's ready to go on my end. I'm gonna rock and roll here. So there's a good intro, like a three and a half minute intro cutscene at the very beginning. So I'll do my my intro stuff while that's going on. Uh, so yeah, we'll jump right in. Um, these are a little kind of like an intro level. I'll do that real quick here. Pretty easy. The first part of this intro level is there's like one trick and then we watch our three and a half minute cutscene so we'll do that real quick so we're on over here and when, when we get into this lighthouse and we get to the bottom level there will be this bathysphere and what we're going to do normally you get in it and you like pull the lever and the bathysphere floats underwater and brings you to the city and it's a pretty cool intro it really is a pretty cool intro as far as uh video game intros go this one's pretty iconic but anyways we're going to do a little trick we're going to jump on top of the bathysphere by jumping backwards and then activating the trigger so you'll see what I'm talking about right here as long as I don't do something silly and accidentally mess it up <laughs> it's a really easy trick but you can mess it up if you're not being careful so here we are we're on top of the bathy sphere instead of inside of it it's kind of a goofy neat little trick the game just gets confused because you jump backwards you know while hitting that lever so you jump and land outside of the door and it just gets, the game gets confused, it doesn't know where to stick you. Um, yeah, so here we are. This is our intro. We'll go ahead and watch this. This is kind of a cool intro because it just lets us uh, look around a rapture. Let's, let's look around at like parts of rapture that maybe they didn't. Oh, oh I'm, so, I'm sorry, I didn't do a countdown. That was my bad. That was rude of me. I, I, told, I got a little excited, I guess. <laughs> my bad. I just jumped in. That's that's unlike me. I'm sorry about that. <laughs> that's goofy. I do have my splits going, but I don't know if you guys can see my splits. <laughs> I'm good. <laughs> I feel good. I usually don't do that. Usually I do a countdown. I think I just got a little excited here. <laughs> my bad. <laughs> just wait an additional 14 seconds to stop. Yeah, fair enough. But I'll, I'll, I'll give you guys an actual countdown here <laughs> when I'm finishing the run. I'll, I'll make sure not to forget. Anyways, yeah, so here's here's uh, here's Rapture. You can see, like, they got some of the buildings are unfinished, or some of the tunnels lead just into nothing. You kind of see that. You can see just a few other things that they didn't really, like, intend to. Like, that, that tunnel there just, like, leads into a mountain, into a rock. It's kind of cool. Um... But anyways, yeah, so like I say, I'm Benedictator. I'll do I'll do my little intro thing here while this is happening. Um, I do Bioshock runs, Bioshock 2 speed runs. I do a handful of other ones, but Bioshock 1 and 2 are kind of my main game. So if you're interested in that, you can always check out my stream. Um, otherwise, yeah, as, as far as Bioshock speed running goes, there's a really great community. So if by the time we're all finished with this, anybody has any questions or anybody possibly wants to get into it, just give me a holler. I'd be... More than happy to help you out and point you to the Discord. And there's a lot of, a lot of friendly Bioshock runners out there. It's a good community. So there we go. The reason that this trick works is when we slide into that little chamber that we just went into, the level ends when your when your character reaches a certain height. We're already at that height since we're standing on top of the bathysphere. Um, otherwise, we normally we'd have to slide into that chamber, and it would take a second for the bath fear to settle and then it would start rising you just save a few seconds that way but um yeah otherwise uh yeah we got about another minute and a half here get to, get to see johnny poor johnny rip rip buddy he never makes it he always tries he never makes it i just want to th throw a shout out to the uh marathon event itself pixels for peace been successful raising a lot of money that's good raising money for a good cause always a nice thing to do it's good to turn turn our, our passions our hobbies into a something productive and, and useful for our community I think it's pretty cool All right, anyways in a sec here we'll actually actually be able to start our run 
Probably about another 10 15 seconds. Alright. I will pick up the shortwave radio. I'm Atlas, and I aim to keep you alive. Okay, so here we go. So we do, this is like intro level part two basically. And we do the really weird trick here. Like a trick that we don't do during any other part of the run basically. So we do it like a weird little save load trick. Here's a floating piece of paper, by the way. I don't know why it's levitating, but it is. How do you like that, sister? This part, I can't really lose time on. It's kind of on a timer. Yeah, we're gonna do a weird little save load trick when we get our Electro Bolt, and it allows us to skip a huge amount of cutscene. But, like, it does this weird thing where the game is always gonna be trying to suck us into this Gatherer's Garden for the rest of the level, so you'll see what I'm talking about. So we do a weird little, weird little jumping thing up here. Right up here. And lights a fire with a snap of his finger. Now we're gonna load that save that we just made, and we're gonna start jumping backwards. So the re for the rest of the level, it's gonna be trying to suck us into that machine where we just got the selector bolt. Oh, this door is gonna be a jerk to me. Oh my god, that lock. So the <laughs> the hitbox for that lock that that lock is really weird. It's not as big as you think it would be, and it can be kind of a pain to try to hit it sometimes. Usually, I don't have that much trouble, but it can be like that. Um, so yeah, so we. We uh, bind our jump button to our mouse scroll. Um, like I say, for the rest of the level, it's trying to suck us into that machine, and it it just it gives us this really weird jumping mechanic that we just have to deal with. And so we're gonna make sure that guy spawns there, and then go that way so that guy spawns there. There we go. Take care of that guy. So that just helps us make sure that guy spawns there, like he should. Go on over here. Bonk. And this part, this part can be tough, because, like, the entrance to this elevator is really goofy. Oh, it made it really cleanly. It can be hard, it, like, it's it's such a small little area that you have to jump into, and since it's trying to, like, pull you directly back, you need to jump into that elevator just so. And, uh, and I made it. Huzzah! Well said. Thanks. I'm not sure what I what it, what that is uh, in reference to, but but thanks. That's either genuine or sarcastic, and I thank you either way. <laughs> All right. So here we are. Our little elevator ride. Who didn't? As soon as you hear that little uh, notification thing, you can jump out of there. So this part also is is a bit weird. The hitbox for that door is goofy, but I made it. Um, I did it really cleanly there. It was really clean. This is another one of those weird little save load things. We're gonna save. That might have been a weird, a weird save. We'll see. Load. We're gonna go anyways, as if it wasn't a weird save. All right. Uh, I'm gonna do another save load because I don't, I don't like how that was. Just to be safe. I don't know. That was like, that was like a weird jump that I did to get in there. So I want to make sure that we're good. Okay. But by doing a save load there, it allows us to also skip a huge amount of cutscene that would normally be taking place right here. But we can just go past all of it. Oh, come on, don't be like that. Luckily for us, yeah, there normally would be a huge cutscene right where we just were, but, but we get to just skip the whole thing. Well, she didn't have no loot for me. I don't know if I've ever seen her not have loot for me before. Okay. So we're pretty much at the end of this little intro level here. Uh, my hops are not so good today. All right, there we go. Those are not the cleanest hops. My my intro to uh, my welcome to Rapture was not the cleanest welcome to Rapture, but oh well. So you want to um, shoot that person there? Ooh, I got that person. Oh, yeah, that that splicer down there. You have to shoot her. Um, it's a one-shot kill anywhere you hit her, but I don't know, just with the way you're moving and jumping, it is possible to miss her. Um, and if you do that, then it's just time loss. Um, we got them. You can shoot them above, like, before they get into that little pool of water if you're fast enough and it saves a little bit of time. I was not having the best of luck with that, but that's okay. 
save like a few seconds if you're able to shoot them before they get to that little pool of water. Then you can zap them. All right, so normally you would just like walk to the door and the door would shut and you'd have to like watch another cutscene. But if you just zap the door, it lets you, it lets it just ends the level. It's so weird. None of the other uh, levels, you can't do that with any of the levels. Just zap the door and exit. But for some reason, Medical Pavilion or uh, Intro to Welcome to Rapture were able to do that. Now this hacking sequence will always be the same as long as it's like a new load of the game. Like, if I were to start the game over without exiting to Windows, that hack sequence would be different. But if I exit to Windows and then restart the game, that hack sequence will always be the same. So, you always want to make sure it's a fresh load of the game when you're running this. Kind of a weird thing. Okay, I did hit the thing. I thought I didn't hit the switch for a second. I'd say, that's no good. We definitely need to be doing that. Alright, we trigger this little ghost here. We can loot a thing, turn around and... Kill another person or two if we want to. So they don't mess around with us later. Kind of on a timer till right then, so we got a little bit of time to waste. Alright. We got our E Pipo. We'll get this. You want to make sure you get that uh, arm piercing ammo right there for your pistol. Pretty important. We're going to go get our incinerate here. Incinerate is very important. Here we go. Take care of that person just cuz. Stop following me! Okay, person. There's our little bot from earlier coming to help us out. I like to put a fire there just to make sure that the splicers don't follow me, or if they do follow me, they get lit on fire and die. Alright, we're gonna get this audio diary. We. Audio diaries, we need at least one for audio diary scripts. It's very important. doesn't matter which one you get, but that one's pretty much right on your way, so that's one that everybody gets. Telekinesis, also, by the way, super OP in this game. Ridiculously OP. One shot pretty much every normal enemy. Can I get the corner jump without messing it up? Yes. Is the answer to that. Alright, we're gonna get our armor piercing rounds out, and we're gonna get telekinesis out. We're gonna do a fling. Flings are one of the cooler tricks in this game. We can just zoom up into the air with telekinesis by hopping on top of certain items. Ooh, I don't like the way this is oriented. Rotate a little bit. Oh my gosh, are you gonna be like that? There we go. Usually this box doesn't give you too much trouble, but it was being sassy to me. Alright. We did that jump over that wall. By jumping over that wall, we're just skipping a Vita chamber, basically. It allows us to, uh, spawn in a desired location, I guess. Alright, this part can be tricky now. Let's go Dr. Steinman. We gotta hit the doctor with this. I want to make your people. Oh, we got him. Nice. We're gonna do a death warp in a second, which is why we have pretty much no health. Get his key, and then we're gonna come back here into the corner. And do a death warp. Oh, I guess I was not at my invincibility frames. I thought I was. So when you get to like one hit point, you trigger invincibility frames that just make you invisibility invisible for like a handful of seconds, and then the next time you take a ticket damage, you die. Um, but I didn't die right away there, which means I did not trigger my invincibility frames. I might have had like just a tiny smidgen of health left, but that's fine. It just took another second or so to, to actually die. But here we go. We're almost done with Medical Pavilion. That wasn't too terrible. That wasn't too bad. Oh, it's good to have a body, just in case somebody's trying to body block you. Here we go. That's Medical Pavilion. We lost a little bit of time, too. My my uh, first part of this run on my PB was pretty dang good, but I'm still I'm still running a little slower than I usually do. But that's fine. That won't be a problem. Alright. Carry a body for body blocking. Yeah. You gotta have a body to body. You know. You know. Fight bodies with bodies. Alright, this is a, one of the only big daddies that we're really gonna care about. We need to rescue this little sister. Not that we care about little sisters. Or not that we need to add them. But rescuing this little sister... Helps us to do this other weird little um, bug that's coming up. Like, you have to rescue her, otherwise it doesn't work. So, 
Fire a few shots into that guy and get ready for his rocket that he's gonna launch at me. Nope, I missed my jump. That's fine. I'll go the slow way. So we're gonna want this because we want to hit the invisible hitbox of an enemy that's like right up there. And we did it. We're gonna use a health here. Alright. I believe. Oop. I wanted that first aid kit because I'm kind of low, but oh well. Alright, I would normally not quick save here, but um, just because of my health situation, I'm actually gonna. I would never quick save there. But we'll play it safe. There you go, we got another first aid kit. Good. Okay. Sometimes if you fling really high, you can land and lose health and die if you're not being careful, so that's why I did that quick save there. Usually, my health my health situation is really weird. Like, I'm pretty low on health packs. It won't be a problem, but it is weird that I am that low on health. Alright, so let's do the camera skip. There's a skip you can do this this camera here if you're fast enough. And I'm usually fast enough. There we go, we're good. So you gotta take a picture of three different spider splicers. And it, it can't be three different pictures of a spider splicer, it's gotta be um, three you know, pictures of different spider splicers. But if you take a picture of that one spider splicer that we were just looking at before, um, before a little quest marker pops up, then you can get another, uh, you can get two pictures off the same one, it'll count as two. Boom, got it. Beautiful. Let the bodies hit the floor, right? Exactly. Alright, I got all the bodies. We're gonna do another death warp right up here. Hi, guy. That guy can body block you sometimes if you're not being careful. He's kind of a jerk. We're gonna do a death warp right in this corner here. Boom. We'll pretty much get ready to get out of this area. Oh yeah. So we're gonna do some diary skips here. So we can do that just to pass through a bunch of dialogue, like certain doors and stuff will be locked until, you know, certain dialogue plays. Oops, I was doing that a little early. There we go. So we're gonna drop that weapon there, and we're gonna put all of our weapons in that little thing, and then we're gonna pick that grenade launcher back up. Um, like, before you enter in this area, he takes away all your weapons, but by, like, doing that little nifty trick there, we can actually have our grenade launcher. I mean, it's not that we really even care about the grenade launcher itself, it's just that by doing it this way, we'll have more, it'll give us more ammunition for the grenade launcher for later on. For some reason, we get more ammunition doing it this way. They called me Atlas. So as long as you stand there and look in that direction, Peach here will always spawn in that same location. You have to kill Peach to exit the level. So we got him. We bodied him. Then we get our one and only upgrade that we really care about in this game, which is um, grenade launch. Grenade launcher damage increase can help us to do some skips later on. There we go. That's Neptune's bounty. Neptune's bounty. Not bad. Not bad. <laughs> I lost a few seconds there. Hopefully, hopefully we'll start saving some time here. Like I say, the beginning, I don't know, my, my PB is pretty decent. It's a good time for me to race against. But I can't get in. So we hop in the water. You move a little faster if you're in the water and you're hopping. This particular incline right here is a really weird incline. So we play with vertical sync turned off, and that allows us to do the flings in this game. But for some reason, if you have vertical sync off, that one platform that I was just on, you move up it at a snail's pace if you're walking. It's ridiculous. So like, you have to hop up that platform. Like you just have to. That's just the way it is. You have to. Come on. Don't be like that, Lock. So we're another little quick like save load thing here. Little a little save manipulation where we hold in the uh, we're just holding in backwards as that little area as that door is closing or as that quick save is happening and it allows us to slip underneath that door uh, before it closes and we can just skip a huge amount of cutscene minutes minutes we're skipping minutes. Yeah, normally we'd still be up in that room watching all this stuff go down, but we don't have to watch any of it. The sub, no! There we go. 
little diary skip to end the level early. Otherwise, we gotta like wait for dialogue. Who wants to wait for dialogue, right? That was hey, we actually saved time there. Point one seconds. I'll take it. Okay, here we are in Arcadia. This is this level is pretty cool. This level is fun. We skip um a large portion of the level by by flinging over a trigger. So normally there'd be a trigger that we'd look in a certain area, we'd cross a certain line, um, and it would cause like Andrew Ryan basically floods the area with like uh, a poison, um, and you gotta like create a uh, a Lazarus vector for the poison to cure it. Like that's how the actual game goes. But we're gonna skip over all that. We're gonna just jump over the trigger with a fling, and uh, oh. That's so weird. I've never had her run backwards like that. That was bizarre, guys. I've never had that. I've never had that splicer run backwards like that. That was that was pretty neat. It didn't. It it's fine. It doesn't matter. But usually you want to take some pictures of her. It's really weird that she uh that she ran away like that. We've got this guy. So what, we want pictures from those guys in particular because they're going to give us our sports boost, which just gives us a little bit of a speed increase, so that's a thing. I'm going to take him out with that box just so I don't have to worry about that splicer coming and attacking me. Sometimes it'll give you crap while you're trying to do this fling here. So here we go. We want to make sure not to look behind us. We want to walk like in a certain area. Oh, and this box is going to orient itself like exactly how I don't need it to be. Ooh, this box is being sassy to me. So usually, you know, the idea is hopefully that you get here, you set it down, you do your jump real quick, but this box is being a little bit difficult to me. Alright, there we go. But this should be good. We should be fine here. Really, the setup for this has to be somewhat precise, just because it's kind of a, a weird jump. Oh, that wasn't quite right. I, I hit a branch. Let's try this again. Oh, yep. We'll have to just try this a few times. We'll get it, though. There we go. That felt good. Oh, no, that wasn't right either. Alright, there we go. That took a few tries, but we made it. Alright, so there we go. Normally, this door that we just walked through would be locked after the area got poisoned, and we wouldn't be able to get out of here, but we jump over the trigger, and we can exit this level early. It took me a few tries, so we're going to lose some time there. I think I did really good on that level on my PB. Like, I nailed it pretty much first try. Yeah, we lost some more time. <laughs> We're a little over. All right, we're gonna do something similar in this level where we're just gonna jump over, a, not a trigger, but we're gonna jump over a railing um, and skip pretty much the whole level here. Which is too bad. Fort Frolic is probably my favorite level. At least it has my favorite NPC, Sandra Cohen. He's a trip. Uh, I'm gonna do a quick save here. Usually you don't really need to, but I sometimes have trouble with this jump. Like I'll jump over the railing like into the water, but we did good there. All right, so we jump over there, and we look up there, and there's the end of the level, and we're good. Boom. Nice. Hey, we saved time there. That was that was better than my Arcadia. So there we go. We just skip past that whole level. Normally, there that little bathy sphere would get blocked, and we would have to like go do a whole bunch of stuff for Sandra Cohen. We'd have to take pictures of some of his uh, apprentices and go. And kill him and take pictures of him and make this weird little art display for him. It's, kind of, it's a really cool level, and Sandra Cohen is a cool NPC. Um, we'll just skip past all that stuff. So we are in F Hephaestus. Probably, I think I can comfortably say, my least favorite level. Um, we do a whole bunch of death warps in this level. And it just, and it kind of seems like we are, walk around in circles on this level, and there's a... It's just really easy. There's a lot of there's a lot of opportunities in this level to have things go wrong, so it can kind of be a pain. We're a little low on our grenades too. Usually we'd be six, and then we'd have six backup too. We only have two backup. That's fine. It's kind of weird. So we're gonna do some diary skips to speed things along, so that a door will unlock faster than it normally would. We got a few seconds, so we're gonna test our skills. Oh! We got it. That's a good omen. It's, it's kind of hard to get that body to stay up there, but we got it. So that's 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 good karma for me. So we just blast those fools with a grenade, you know, because that's how we do. Oh my god, we're moving so slow. All right, there we go. There we are. We're gonna light some fire there. I'm gonna put one more fire down just so that we have full eve here. Boom. There we go. Light. I put fire down there so that the enemies, if enemies are following me, they'll just die. So, 
we're gonna kill a handful of big daddies in this level. Um, again, not that we really care about the Adam. We're not even gonna rescue or harvest the little sisters. We're just gonna leave them. We need these components from the big daddy suits to build um, a bomb. Come on. Ah, there we go. Let's say, where's the big daddy? Woo! Alright. So, I definitely hit my invincibility frames there. You kind of don't want to do that, but it's not a big deal. We just need to be aware of the fact that I did that. Um, yeah, you gotta really pay attention to your invincibility frames in this level. At least know whether or not you hit them or not. Um, because we're about to take an insane amount of damage coming up in a second. Which is fine, because we can heal through it. We just need to be aware that that's what's going on. Right here. We're just gonna heal as we're running through here. Alright, that was that was pretty good. Like that, and that should be there we go. Do a death warp. Alright, we're fine. Let's go. We got our thing. We're gonna collect our components to build our little bomb here. Hopefully this little sister get out of our way. Pick up that ionic gel container right there, bust that for later, I guess. And we're gonna get ready for another death warp coming up here. Perfect. Like that. And we're good. And we're good. Now we're gonna go with the last couple components. We'll build our bomb and we'll set it and get out of here. Out of my way, little sister. She's like exactly in the way of that Vita chamber. I can still get around, but it is kind of annoying. Alright, let's go. Well, let's go. Now it's time to go get, like I say, our last couple components of this bomb that we're building. It's an EMP bomb. Hey guy. There's our last component. Perfect. Start building this bomb as we're uh, getting lit on fire here. And then do a death warp. There we are. And there we are. It does look like a real bomb, actually. Yes. Alright, I'm not so worried about killing that guy. He was just kind of was in my way. I don't care about those people shooting me. They can leave me alone. Alright. So we're going to do a little thing. We're just going to hop through the center of the level there. Activate our bomb. Do a death warp. Boom. Yeah, we just jump through the center of the... Do a little out of bounds. Jump through the center of the level. That's how we do. Alright, we're going to collect that. First aid kit. Reload my shotgun. I'm going to collect that body. I'm going to collect that body. There we go. I'm having some trouble with... with my telekinesis of bodies. There we go. I like to have a body and my shotgun here because this guy will body block you, but you can just boom, hit him with a body and hit him with a shotgun to get him out of your way. You will not defeat me. Let me just hang out here, wait for these little locks to bust. Pow! And we're pretty much ready to get out of here. Little diary. Skip manipulation in that level early. Now we're gonna do a really weird trick where we're gonna like we're gonna play a radio message, and then we're gonna trigger this door as if we're going back to the previous level. But then we're gonna run out of this area before it has a chance to really take effect. Boop. So as soon as we get the dialogue set to a certain way that we want it, um, oops, the level is gonna warp us out, and we're gonna go back to the previous level. But we can control when that happens by playing audio diaries in a certain way. Um, so right there, I was doing a little platforming, jumping over an invisible wall by climbing over a, a vending machine. Alright. Doing some dialogue manipulation there. Gonna do more diary or audio manipulation. And we're going to trigger this cutscene, and now we made it, we, we did the trigger, I played the message in, in the right way to where it's going to bring us back to the previous level. So we basically, we started that Andrew Ryan cutscene, and then we went back to the previous level. That's that's kind of the, the main idea here. Now we're going to go back to Rapture Central Control. And doing this weird little thing is going to allow us to skip a huge amount of, like, a, just a, a ton of cutscenes. Um, 
which is cool. So we just skip a t skip a ton of cutscene. We're gonna do a little fling over a locked door here, um, and yeah, that's that's what this level is. This level is pretty pretty cool as far as the strats we use to get past it. So we're gonna go the same path that we just were, but now there's gonna be a, a door that's locked that's gonna block us from getting in here. Um, normally it would block you from exiting the level, but we're coming at it from a different angle. Uh, so we got to get this napalm to kind of sit itself just right here. And that looks pretty decent. That'll work. It's, it's a little bit off to the side, but it should be just fine. Alright, so this fling can be a little tricky because there's a really narrow area. Oh, I got it first try. Nice. It's a really narrow area you got to jump through. And I made it. I made it. Do another little save load thing there, and this cutscene is going to play out while we're just running this way. We don't have to watch it. We just run right here, we just put the key in there, and then we'll be able to skip all this dialogue that's going to happen too. Would you kindly, would you kindly like normally we'd have to listen at following this little flashback thing. Normally we'd have to listen to minutes of, of dialogue, but we can just skip it with some audio diary, audio, uh, audio diary skips. We do that, play a couple audio diaries, we skip all that dialogue that we normally have to sit through. Andy Ryan's gonna phase through this glass. There he is. And we're just gonna get out of here. That's too bad, because that's like one of the best parts of the game. Like that cutscene is a, like a pretty good twist in the game, pretty good plot twist, but we just skip past it. We're like, whatever. Whatever. There we go. There we go. On to Olympus Heights. Did I accidentally not, uh, oh no, oh no, oh no, what am I doing? There we go. <laughs> I thought I did not hit this, the split button, but I did. That definitely was not a gold split. Alright, here we go. Now you know the truth. There we go. So do some more audio diary skips here to speed things up a teeny bit. So, this girl gets mad if you eat her candy bars. That's mine. Hey! It's rude. You can also do little sister hops here. You got a little bit of time to waste, so you can just find whatever you want to do to, to pass the time. I like to try to bounce on top of her head. It tries to bounce you off. Come with me. I think the, the most I've ever gotten is seven hops in a row. Wait, was it seven or was it nine? I don't remember. It was a lot. And we got another thing we can do up here. We can do our teddy bear hops. While we're waiting for this door to open. Who is he? Who is he? He's here to help us. Alright. Let's go teddy bear. Boing. Oh, I got it. Yay. If you do it just right, you can jump on top of her head. And show her who the, who the boss is. I'm the boss of your little world, little girl. I'll show you what's up. Alright. So now we're on to this next level. So we're going to do a similar skip that we did in RCC. Where we played a radio message and then like triggered the end of the level but then backed out of that that door we're gonna do the same thing here pretty much but now but it's a little different in this one we, we do it similarly but we have to like we have to be a little more uh conscious of our our audio diary situation or you know audio whatever so here we go we're gonna come up here bonk we got our radio message play that one because it's a big one it doesn't matter and then that message is gonna. This message is gonna play, and we're gonna have to do some save loads while this is going. Because when we like load a save, it restarts any uh, radio message that's playing when the uh, when the save starts. There it is. When he says "Code Yellow," yellow is the end of that audio message, and we're gonna do a save load right there, and it'll start that audio message from the beginning. So we do that a couple times to kind of extend to the end of the level. We don't want that audio to finish yet, because when that finishes, it's going to bring us to the next level. I got others. Code. Yellow. And that's the last time that we're going to have to do that little maneuver, because we're going to pick up another audio diary here in a second, and it's going to allow us just to not worry about it anymore. Play that radio message that we just got, and then we're going to play this radio message here. And that allows us now we don't really have to worry about the dialogue so much. It's it's taken care of. We won't we won't get warped out early now. We're good. Alright, so fifty seven forty four. 
Boom, there we go. Boom. Those dials can be kind of, a, there's like a weird, almost like a weird lag, like, like a fraction of a second from when you click those nodules till the thing actually changes. So you kind of, it's kind of weird. You kind of have to like not pay attention by, by, uh, by how it looks. You just have to like really be conscious of how many mouse clicks you're doing. But like, oh, I'm just apparently not totally missing that thing. It's fine. But yeah, I don't know, whatever. Those, those dials can be kind of annoying. All right, so we're almost at the end of the level. We're going to do a, a thing kind of like we did the end of Rapture Center Control. We're going to play a message early to kind of initiate the end of this level. We'll do it right here. We just got to make sure that we collect that. Oh. Oh, oh, weird. Weird. It was giving us a little, little sass there. Normally, we would have ended that level just a, a teeny bit earlier, but it was giving us a little bit of attitude. That's fine. <laughs> this run is pretty cool. Walls are only a suggestion. Right, it's just just a just an idea. It's kind of an idea. You can you can pay attention to walls if you want. Actually, there's not like a huge amount of out of bouncing in this game, but in the area where we do like leap over walls or do a little bit out of bounds, it's really cool. The, the, the skips in this game are pretty nifty. Like I've seen other speedruns with out of bounds where you just hop out of bounds and you run through the whole level out of bounds, which is kind of cool, but like, I don't know. The out of bounds tricks in this game are a little niftier, I, I think. No shade on anybody who does out-of-bounds speedruns. But yeah. Take a little bit of damage there, that's good. We actually want to reduce our health. I'd actually prefer it if our health was a little bit lower, but that's fine, we can live through this. Item climbing OP, yeah, no doubt. No doubt. Cough, cough, Doom 2016, right, yeah, exactly, exactly. And I've seen other ones too, but yeah, Doom is, Doom is one of those ones. Take a little more damage here, that's fine. You had a little bit of lag. I don't know if it showed the lag for you guys, but I had a little bit of lag there. But that's that's something you just kind of play through. It happens. Part of this, part of the run in Bioshock. You get little lag spikes here and there. All right, so we got that other lot 192. That's kind of what we were coming here for. Now we're going to do a death warp. And uh, pretty much exit out of this level pretty soon here. Levels are, <laughs> are only a suggestion, right? It's just an abstract idea. All right, take a little bit of damage. Not a big deal. Not the end of the world. We'll kill them because we can. You don't have to. We'll kill them because we can. You don't have to. Totally not necessary. All right, we're gonna do a cool little elevator skip. Like, there's a broken elevator that we're definitely not supposed to get into it. But if you jump into it at a certain angle, you can just like pretty much soar right to the end of this little spot. I like to do a quick save because you can soft lock here if you don't jump quite right. It's not like a hard jump to make, but if you don't do it quite right, like I say, you can soft lock. So we're gonna just bounce down here. Blunk. And we just instead of taking an elevator ride, we just we just fall down. We just fall down. It's easier that way. It's easier that way. Pardon me, guy. Now we're gonna move on to the next level. So this level's pretty cool. We're gonna pretty much just th this trick I should say is pretty pretty uh, cool this level is cool as well but um, for this trick we're pretty much gonna skip past the whole thing uh, there's a trigger that we're gonna walk past that's gonna lock us in place and then he's gonna lock the door and then we have to go do a whole bunch of crap in this level but we're gonna jump over the trigger that locks us in place and we can run through the door before he locks it so it's kind of a cool thing this whole marathon is, <laughs> is a suggestion that's right there you go there you go all right, we're gonna grab this. It just helps us take care of these security bots, these little sentry bots up here. It's not essential, but I don't know, whatever. They can be annoying. It's nice if you can get them out of your way. Um, <clears throat> but when we get into this next room, we're gonna do a little bit of setting up. We gotta look at a certain direction and stand in a certain spot, and then we'll be able to jump over this trigger. Uh, out of my way, guy. So we want basically the center of this circle, the like corner of that rug to be in the center of the circle and we want to look pretty much right there. I'm gonna call that good. We'll save it. Hopefully we get this first try. It felt good. I think we're good. Boom! First try. Not bad. Not bad. <clears throat> there it is. Skip past that. Totally skip past that. Yeah, so my <laughs> my uh, PB, my splits were all messed up. So the last few splits here are gonna be kind of wonky. <clears throat> but it's fine. Alright, so you want to stand in a certain spot and look in a certain area during this part, and you want to start moving at a certain time. 
right now, right after she does that little twitch movement there. Um, and the idea here is that we want this little sister to continue running after she exits this door right here. So as long as you're, if, if you set it up just right, you can ensure that she'll always run. But it's kind of like, kind of meticulous. Like you have to really be standing in the right spot, looking in the right area and move at exactly the right time. It's not too tough to do, but it's easy enough to mess up. And she's running, so we're good. Otherwise, if you don't do it quite right, she'll just start walking through the rest of the level, which you can get her to start running again, but you know, it's definitely a time loss if she starts walking, so. So we're good here though. So this level's kind of annoying. We just have to guide this little sister through this whole level and she'll harvest some bodies here, but oh. That was weird. I'm surprised that didn't instantly kill her with that telekinesis, but oh well, whatever. Huh. They play well with the suckers. Rude. Oops. Oh, we'll put that right there. How about that? All right, so we can mess around with some of those grenades. Blowing them up helps to kill them a little faster. They're running around my proximity grenade. How rude! That was just that was just me. They always run in that direction. That was just me like placing the grenade in a, kind of an unfortunate spot, but that's okay. Not a big deal. All right, I'm gonna do a quick save here just to be safe because the little sister has a small chance of getting soft locked on this next harvesting spot. So we'll do a quick save there just to make sure that we're good. All right. Oh, what are you doing, Splicer? Don't run away from me. There we go. There we go, we got more proximity mines. There should even be a couple more there. We're gonna place one right there, we're gonna place one right there, we're gonna place one right there. That should be good enough for now. How many more? We got four. Oh, I have one more I can use still. Alright, I don't want to use any more proximity mines. I want to make sure I have six for the end of this, the end of this level, or for the next level, basically. So you can place, like I say, place some grenades down, some some proximity grenades, just to make splicers die a little quicker, save a little bit of time. Oh, I thought I missed her with that. And there's a spider splicer, so it's three normal splicers and then a spider splicer. And once you kill that spider splicer, that's how you know that phase is finished, basically. And our little sister is running, which means she did not get soft locked, so we're great as far as that goes. We're gonna want to get some steel tip bolts going on here. We're gonna have some enemies that are. Swimming. They're swimming. We're gonna surprise them while they're snorkeling. We're gonna shoot them with arrows. Can you force me to practice right now? <laughs> I know them feels. Shout out to developers that make triggers smaller than your jumping height. Yeah, for real. Yeah, with that, that trick in, in the previous level, no doubt, right? <laughs> All right, so here's where our splices are gonna be swimming. They're swimming in this little pool of water, and we're going to rudely surprise them and murder them. Mid-bath. Yeah, I changed it up. They're not swimming anymore. Now they're taking a bath. Alright, let's just make sure we're full on Eve here. Oh. There we go. Let's go, little sister. So we get more proximity mines, it's tricky, right? It's tricky. You're like, oh, proximity mines, let's set down more proximity mines and make more traps to make this part go faster. But, this little area has is infamous for soft locking if you place proximity mines down. So you don't want to actually do that during this part. It's counterintuitive. It just, it's not worth it. The chances are too high of the game soft locking if you do that. So we just avoid doing that normally. Uh, please don't hit my little sister. Rude. Well, she took a few a few uh, hits there, so she might start walking. If she takes damage, sometimes she'll start walking. She might be fine, but she might start walking. We'll see what happens. That second splicer came really quick and started attacking her before I was ready. It was kind of goofy, but that's fine. 
I am a pretty girl, Mr. B. You are. Alright, she's gonna start walking. Nope, she's still running. She's good. She's like, yeah, I got I got knocked on a couple times, but I'm fine. Take care of him just because we can. Not not really. Don't really have to, but we can. Right, we're gonna um, place a bunch of trap bolts here in a second. This is a big daddy that's gonna bust out of that wall like the Kool-Aid man. Uh, but we're gonna let her run ahead and open up the next door first while that's going on, and then we can kind of just piggyback off that. Alright, she should be opening the door. Place some of these down. These are super powerful against big daddies, but like half of these just won't spawn for some reason. There we go, got him. But as long as a couple of them spawn, we can just hit that last shotgun blast and take off. So here we go. We can make sure that we have all the ammo we need. We need a few more steel tip bolts, but we'll get them in just a second. And we're gonna get our proximity grenades all set up. So that's what we want. We want six proximity grenades and we want at least four steel tip bolts. Usually you just loot everything in here because you can. You definitely don't need to loot pretty much anything in this area, but whatever. Looting stuff is fun, right? So there we go. We got four. We got a whole bunch of steel tit bolts, and we have six proximity mines. That's perfect. That's that's what we need for the end of the the end fight here. Uh, there we go. There we go. So that level one, not too bad at all. Not too bad at all. This next level is about a minute or so, and then that'll be the end of the run. So we're coming up on. Um, Big Daddies are just suggestion pretty much in this game. Yeah, we're coming up in the end of the run, like a minute here. I'll give you a, a, a good countdown. But it's going to be three phases. You know, we, we beat him three times, basically. And then after we, each time after we beat him, we inject him. So the fourth time that we stab him is going to be in the end of the run. But I'll make it real clear for you. I'll give you a countdown. Unlike the beginning of the run. <laughs> I'll give you a good countdown when we're, uh, when we're finishing up here. Putting kids in laundry chutes to operate elevators seems normal. Well, at least it justifies my obsession with shoving kids down laundry chutes. <laughs> that makes me sound like a weird creep. That's not an actual thing I have. Don't worry. Alright, so we're going to instantly kill him in the first two phases by placing down proximity grenades like that. Boom. Phase one, done. Oh, I'm like having trouble placing those down. That's goofy. Alright. Boom. So we're going to stab him twice more. Boom. We're going to get this out, we're going to stab him, and then we're going to hit him with a bunch of arrows, and then we'll stab him again. Alright, so we're going to be done with the run real soon here. I'll shoot him a bunch of times, then we'll poke him one more time, that'll be it. So one, two, three. Oh, oh don't do that. Alright, we're going to be five, four, three, two, one. There we go. That's the end of the run. Ow! Would you kindly? Oh yeah, you know it. You know it. All right, well, thank you very much, guys. That's the end of the run. Um, yeah, thank you very much. Thanks for watching. I had had a good time. Yeah. All right. Well, I'll go ahead and uh, end the stream here and uh, turn it on over to the next folks. Yeah, I suppose I'll I'll kind of just go over what I what I did at the very beginning. But if if anybody uh, has interest in running some Bioshock or, or anything like that, feel free to reach out to me. I'd be happy to give you any pointers or give you any advice, and I can always point you to the uh, Bioshock Speedrun Discord. Um, and there's one Discord for Bioshock One, Two, and Infinite, so it's all all the Bioshock games are all pulled into one uh, Discord. So yeah. Up next we got Final Fantasy XIV, but.